and government is expecting development partners to contribute 50 percent of the 150 million US dollars to fund the five-year multilateral mining integrity projects expected to end illegal mining popularly called Galamsey. This was made known to join news by the leader of the team that put together the MMIP document, Dr. Kakari, at the just ended validation workshop at the University of Mines and Technology in the western region town of Takwa. He spoke with Latif Idris. The MMIP has always been uh, the thing that we want to do in terms of implementation. But we realized that uh, if you want to kickstart the project, you need to have a manual of a sort, which we call the Project Appraisal and Implementation Document Paid. And we're here to try to validate that. Once it's validated by stakeholders, we are able then to be able to finalize it and then have that document, that which is going to be the basis for which the MMIP will start working and implementation will start. Once we get that done, would you say that will mark the beginning of the end of illegal mining in Ghana? We, we think that it's a good beginning, it's a sustainable uh, approach we are trying to do so that even the project which is five years ends we don't think that it will end with the project because we are putting in measures which will ensure sustainability uh, and, and so and so moving forward we think that uh, it, will, it will it will it will stop certain things like degradation of our forest it will we will ensure rejuvenation of our rivers yeah. and water bodies and at least uh, the monitoring alone is telling you that there's improvement in bream and all that the bream river and all that so so it, it is just a, a project in phases in the first phase, moratorium and all that is gone. We're going to have a medium, uh, the middle phase, and then the, 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 the long term phase. Uh, and we're, we're looking at huge sums of money involved. We're looking at 100 million. 150 million US dollars. A day. I mean, in a year, we're looking at 100 million Ghana cities for a year. Yeah, okay. You're into cities. Into cities, yeah. Do we know the source of funding? Well, um, at the moment, we, we think that um, the, the funding partners, uh, who, because of the sustainable development goals, uh, you knowing that this is a problem which is globally uh, is a global issue. Our Ivory Coast are complaining of their exactly. waters. So development partners, we think, would must contribute about 50% of what we are saying, about 150 million US dollars we are estimating to do this work. And the government itself will have to provide about 20% and 30 million US dollars and so on. And we may even have to raise funds and, and, and get grants and donations and all that, which is all part of this. Yeah. The government's one will be the seed money and we believe, and that will help us be able to do the work. And that how much of a seed money are we looking at? At the moment, we're saying 30 million US dollars. Mm. Is that readily available to kickstart this whole project? This, this, this question should go to my minister, honorable minister, you would know. <laughs> okay. As far as I'm concerned, being a technical man, we have been able to put the documents together with some consultants and we are validating the thing. When we, it is done, we are ready to kickstart the project. Uh, in the documents I've been going through and there is MIU. Um, the Mining Intelligence Unit. Yes. yes. Uh, it's no, captured somewhere, no. committee somewhere, it's yes. captured unit. Yes. Uh, how crucial will this unit be in ensuring that legally operating miners operate within their jurisdiction and do not cross boundaries? One. Two, that we do not have galamsias coming back onto site. We, we think that, first of all, there must be a regulatory framework, a legal framework, which we, we, we were thinking that we need to. Uh, have. We need to review the, uh, the laws, especially now. They are telling you that uh, small scale and is, uh, or small scale operations is, is defined as only an area of land, 25 acres. Yeah. You know. Hitherto, it was uh, due to uh, capital investment, the level of capital investment, and also the technology to be used. So that that ought to be reviewed again. But we think that, with your question, we need to have form cooperatives, and so these committees will work with these cooperatives. You know, because we don't have small scale many associations at the level that we think they should have. Mm. And so when they are brought together like that, we can then be able to, we will then be able to um, give them. Um, 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 and technical services and, and also be able to put them in the taxable bracket. Okay. You understand? Because then they are they are organized. Okay. And you deal with an organized okay. group. That kind of thing. Again, at page 19 of the documents, uh, uh, point four, somewhere here, it reads, you're also going to engage parliament to explore <laughs> the possibility of exemption of 
ASM licenses yes. from ratification, yes. review existing legislation for appropriateness and educate and create awareness on existing policies and legal framework. Yes. This I'm sure they uh, small school owners will not be happy to, to I mean identify this in the documents. I thought they should rather be happy because what people are saying is that if we want to grant licenses for small scale miners, mm -hmm. Parliament must ratify it. And that is an ad additional time. And Parliament will ratify numerous and many licenses. And you're talking about hundreds and thousands of them. What happened was that when we were drafting this document, somebody said, uh, look, since we started doing giving licenses, we flouted the parliamentary requirement that all of them should go for ratification. And we are sitting down and seeing that if we should go that way too, it's going to give us problems. Already they are complaining that it takes too long to have, to have licenses. Now you're going to ratify it. So we want to engage the parliament and be sure whether indeed there, there are laws which say that it ought to be ratified by them. Oh, okay. And that is what we are saying. So that is why some people are meeting today and trying to look at it, whether indeed it's a way forward. If it has to be ratified and to bring sanity, why not? Because we want to make sure that at the end of the day, there is sanity in the small scale. If not, what? If, 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 if it's not right, supposed to be ratified by parliament. parliament, well, then we are in the status quo because nobody goes to parliament for ratification as I speak now. Okay. So then it means that we are, we are we are in the status quo, and then we begin to then look at much more in areas of cooperatives, in areas of making sure they are well organized, and then they are also put within the proper legal framework for them to be operating. But if it's go, supposed to go for ratification, I'm saying that that is going to be another challenge in terms of delivery mm. of, of licenses and all that, and that is something that we are discussing now in the various syndicate groups mm. so that they come up with something we're going forward. Remember, what they are doing now will inform finally the document, the final document, inform the, inform the final document. What would you say is the one key issue that stands out in this whole document for you? To me, to me, I think that this final, this document will ensure full stakeholder participation, full buying and give a sense of ownership. That is the only way we can succeed. If the chiefs buy, uh, have a buy-in, if the school scale miners begin to appreciate that we are there to help them, we are not against illegal mining, like the president has been saying. We are not against uh, 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 legal mining. Or no, we are not against mining. But it has to be done responsibly. So all that we are saying is that help us to help you so that we don't see this kind of degradation we are seeing. You know, otherwise, in 50, 2050, we'll be importing water. I am afraid if we don't go that way. Okay. And this is a sustainable bridge. Moving from Galamse, it has emerged that six excavators were spotted at the mining site where Eng Wang, a Chinese woman, woman accused of spearheading illegal mining in parts of the Ashanti region, was arrested. She, together with four other Chinese nationals, are standing trial at the Accra High Court following their arrest on May 5. All five pleaded guilty when their charges were read to them in court. Joe News' Joseph Akablay has more in this report. So the first controversy that had to be settled had to do with the issue of who serves as interpreter. In the past, both parties had agreed a Chinese national based in Ghana shouldn't be the interpreter for the court. A Ghanaian was brought in this time around. Esther Edu, who is an external interpreter with the judicial service, was brought in and approved by lawyers on both sides to serve as interpreter for the court. Uh, with regards to the hearing proper, uh, what happened was that they had to first read the charges against these individuals and as we already know they are being charged under the mining act they're also being charged for illegal employment of foreign nationals so apart from uh, they being accused of engaging in illegal mining Aisha Huang who is the first accused person is being accused of employing the four other persons illegally to undertake these activities uh, the, the prosecution has been taken over like I pointed out at a previous hearing by the director of public prosecution herself uh, Yvonne Obobisa Atakra who led the that prosecution today as well. Uh, she introduced the state's first witness, Assistant Superintendent Ruben 
Abrabra was brought in as the first witness for the state. Now, he was the officer that led the team of seven officers of the Ghana Immigration Service to effect the arrest of the five nationals as Bepo Tintin in the Ashanti region. He narrated to the court how he picked up these individuals from the site, how some of them ran away from the site when he tried apprehending them, and how he was able to subsequently pick them up from different spots a few meters away from the site. One of them was arrested actually on the site uh, when he was cooking with the other individuals arrested some few meters away at a cocoa farm, which he said some parts had already been cleared by these individuals engaged in illegal mining. He also told the court that some six excavators were identified at the mining site where these individuals were arrested. Now, he's supposed to continue with his testimony on October 9, but he had wanted to tender into the court's records a video recording, a video recording that was taken at the mining site to portray the picture as they found it on that day. So that will also be done on October 9, after which lawyer for the five accused persons, Bernard Oredo, will have his chance to take a cross examination of these individuals. Reporting for Joy News, Joseph Akable, Law Courts Complex. Our information one.